hello and welcome. My name is Amanda May and this is my Counted Cross Stitch channel, also known as Floss Tube. And yeah, I'm happy to be here. So I design under the name Artith Design, uh, even though my name is Amanda May McNaughton. This is little Luna Moon and I've got Loki Apple coming soon to say hello. Yes, they can't, they can't help themselves. I have strategically, come here, sweetheart. I have tried to strategically place a dog bed up here on my sewing table, which is up pretty high because the dogs just want to be on my lap. <laughs> and I'm just, ah, I'm trying to, I want a video, but I also want to, I want to, I want to love the pugs and I want to do a video and I can't have them on my lap and show you cross stitch at the same time. So... <laughs> <laughs> we're in a big of a bit of a pickle. So hey, it's been a while since my last video. I have been cross stitching away. I have been working on models, as well as hunting for treasures, and both in Maryland and outside of Maryland. I have a couple videos in my floss tube on location section of my channel here on YouTube that is called floss tube on location where I cross state lines for cross stitch. Well, <laughs> I just did that recently and I'll be having a video posted hopefully soon <laughs> of that adventure of going out of state to find cross stitch because what can I say? Cross stitch makes me happy and so do pugs. Pugs and cross stitch. So usually I cross stitch at night after my kids go to sleep, the pugs sit on my lap and I stitch and stitch and stitch or during the day, if I happen to cross stitch like at during the day, like if I'm watching a movie, like right now my kids were we were rewatching all like all of the Marvel movies in preparation for the release of the movie Doctor Strange. So it's like I've seen those movies before, so I can sit and cross stitch, but also watch the movies like look up and down. So that's how I've been doing a lot of my model stitching. That's um, for projects and stuff that are coming out soon. So I am participating in a couple of things this year for yeah like collaborations goody goody things so i'm gonna be in the, the the box for the holiday christmas advent style box for the black needle society that's going on you can go find information about that over at the black needle society and i will have their information uh, i'm also uh, participating in a collaborative cross stitch design with a uh, design palette um, with the Stitch the Rainbow for 2022 and it's with a collection of different cross stitch designers and so we are using the Cottage Garden threads which are awesome. Um, they are from Australia. They're stranded cotton. Uh, hashtag, uh, hashtag, <laughs> come here sweetheart, don't jump off the table babe. Uh, <laughs> um, I forgot what the hashtag was. Oh my goodness. I need higher upstairs for uh, higher stairs, dog stairs for these dogs. Um, anyway, anyway, <laughs> we're using, so the designers that are participating in the Stitch the Rainbow for 2022, we've got the four colors of the cottage garden threads. These are over dyed in Australia. So there's um, terracotta, dandelion, golden gully, and spruce. Uh, Abby of Top Knot Stipper, Stitcher Shop is importing all no. the threads from Australia. So she will no. be having thread packs available uh, for, okay, you can, you can get down, you can get down for that. And I know there's a, at least 13 other stitchers besides myself participating in the no. stitch participating in the Stitch the Rainbow. Uh, yeah, so I have been working on that stuff. I'm super stoked. Um, my dogs are barking. A neighbor has a, a new dog in their backyard and the dogs have been all about it. Whew. So it's been a hot minute since I, I've been on YouTube to talk about Counted Cross Stitch. So I've got some finishes to show you. I literally have a whole thing of books and patterns and stuff to show that I know a couple of you were very disappointed in me last video because I had to cut my video short and could not show you all the goodies. 
So I have sequestered my children. They are watching the Lego Batman movie with my husband. I told them I'm going to film as long as I can. I don't know how, because I have so much to talk to you all about. I don't know where to start or where to end. So this is going to be very free flowing. So I mean, grab a drink, um, sparkling water, your lemonade, if you're in the Southern Hemisphere, a hot chocolate or I mean, whatever you, whatever you like and let's talk grass stitch ah okay i have some finds i want to show you and we're just i'm just going to pull from the table and we'll see what happens so i i love the uk and one place that i've always wanted to go was scotland and anyway my my husband's scottish I found these handmade buttons um, with the thistle handmade in Scotland, and I cannot wait to put this on something. I found this at a thrift store, and I was so excited. It came with all the dust included. I have not taken any of the dust off. <laughs> and this is a little stand. Hugs, what are you doing? Uh, where I can put, like, th spool threads. So, you know, this tr to dish, uh, typical, like, sewing thread, but you can also use, like, so this is like the Wonderfill, the 12 weight, their cotton thread can go on there or like the Sulky thread pack stuff. Here's like, oopsie, like the Hello Shimmer can even fit on there for all that good stuff. So I'm excited. I'm not sure. I know I'm going to take the dust off of this. So that's like number one priority, but I don't know if I'm going to repaint this or leave it as is here. So I got that. I also, um, I blame floss tube. Thank all of you, <laughs> all of you makers and creators out there. Um, and I say blame with so much love in my heart because I, yeah, so much love. I, I saw these boxes, pug, what are you doing from far away? And I was like, oh, I just thought it was like one little box, like not a big deal. Oh no, I got the stack of all boxes. So someone that's puggy pug, can you not do that? So um, he found um, foam, styrofoam, and has decided he wants to chew it. Oh my goodness. Okay, Pugs, stop. Stop. Stop, stop, stop. Okay. They don't like this. Okay, here you go. Can you hop up there and then hop up here? Can you do that? Can you do hops? Here, show me, show me, can you hop? Show me, show me, hop. Okay, and then hop. There we go, okay, hop, hop. Okay, can you hang out up there, please? So I know that many of you have the wood like shaker boxes this, these are the paper mache ones but what I really liked is it had like a sampler style decoupage inside so this is the top of one and then in there is this one and this is paper mache meant to or like decoupage and I got the third one so I got to figure out which treasures I'm going to put in here because I love these little stackable boxes I do, I do, I do. I know I've seen like the smallest ones that have been made into without lids, the little tiny, tiny ones into, you know, all the cool little things they can make them. Um, pin cushion, the first, the smallest ones I've seen made out of pin cushions, made into pin cushions. So isn't that cute? So never judge, judge a box by its cover, right? So from far away, I just thought it was this, but it was all right, what else do I have to show you? Oh my gosh, so they're on watch. Look at this, ready? Look at this. Not gonna get anything. Yeah, I'm talking to you. <laughs> okay, um, <laughs> let me show you some cross stitch. I've had this car as my car project for a long time. This was the very first pattern ever, ever that came out in 2002 by Blackbird Designs. This came out as a complimentary chart. I found this chart with red, the red thread and a piece of R&R &R linen. It was an unmarked R&R &R linen. 
it came with this note that it was from the stitchers to the first and hopefully annual getaway with needle and thread. And this in stitches, um, this came in it. So I think this is like one of the first offerings by Blackbird Designs. It's a complimentary chart that I think you can find online. I have the physical copy. So this is my, this is my finish. So I, again, did it on the unmarked Blackbird. I used uh, two strands of the red that came with, I think it was like 349 DMC. Um, I will say too, this is the first and only Blackbird chart I have ever found at a thrift store, you know, charity shop, whatever, like not in a, in a full retail establishment. So this is the first and only one I've ever found. So I did it as charted except for the charting here, um, the black, um, the, the initials and the year I did put my own initials. So I did change that. So I did AM for Amanda May or Amanda McNaughton. So however you'd like to do that. And then I did 2022. I did a wonky two here. I thought about making all of them the nice big twos as charted here, like those big won those big wonky twos, and decided to make a little tiny wonky one because I wanted a petite wonky one. So there we go. And this is like my first ever piece that I have um, dated, like big date, like, hey, hi, I've committed to a date. Here it is. So my initials and, and my date. I don't know how I'm going to finish this or what I'm going to do with it. But I am excited that this is a red sampler that I have done. This is my first non-model stitched red sampler. I have other red samplers that I've done and they were all in my count the fill in the blank series. So count the creamers, count the cups, count the saucers, um, and count the pins. So I have those red samplers, but they're models and so they're not like really up on my walls. Um, but so this is my first official red sampler that I have stitched that's not going in a model box. <laughs> so I'm super stoked about that. So that's my first finish. I am gonna keep this chart even though I've stitched it because I might wanna stitch it in the future. And I also think it's super cool that I found this. Um, I actually found this chart um, the week that, um, well, anyway, I found this chart uh, last year and I'm happy, I'm happy that I, that I have it. So my next finish, um, you know, one half of Blackbird, um, she passed away last year. And then um, I, so I was happy to stitch and finish that piece. And then I also stitched and finished a piece in memory of um, another cross stitch designer, um, uh, Pat Carson. She just passed, she passed away. Um, she was, um, I never met Pat in person. Um, she was very influential in the needlework community for the last 40 years and her stuff is still out there. Uh, I found this, um, this is one of her charts that her company put out and it's from her company Designs by Gloria and Pat. So she had other designers designing under her platform. It wasn't just her and Gloria. So I decided to, and this is his book 11, one nice thing after another. I think it's from like 1980. Yep, 1980. So it's 42 years old. The book 42, the, the answers to life in the universe, right? The answer, what is the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy and the importance of 42. So here we go, 42 years in the making. Um, here is my take on this piece here. It's so it was part of the larger hope sampler here. And this is the motif down below here. I chose just to do this motif and not the whole sampler. So this is my, um, in honor of Pat. Um, so again, I never met her, but uh, I watched several of her uh, Facebook video, her Facebook lives and stuff that she did back in 2017. Um, I was pregnant with my son. Um, and she did some stitching in hand videos at the at Nashville Needlework Market that got filmed. So I watched how she did things and learned from Pat. And uh, I purchased like her Pat's favorite needles when they came out. Um, so those were some of the first needles I ever stitched with. So I owe a lot to her, um, even though I never met her. So I, I wanted to stitch something. Uh, so this is what I did. I did, uh, I did a full color conversion. This is on a piece of deep... I think it's deep 
Caribbean by um, Silk Weaver Fabrics. They are out of New Jersey. And this was a piece that I got for free when I won the Just Cross Stitch 2019 Ornament Designer Contest Series. Um, so um, I had gotten this piece of fabric. So that's the story with that. I made a couple of mis mistakes on the flowers here, but I, I feel like I, I feel like I, um, I fixed, I fixed it okay. And to me, these look like, um, the birds that like folded paper birds, like origami birds or something. So I really like that. So I don't know how I'm going to finish it, but I'm happy that it's done. So I finished that May 21st and I started it December 15th of 2021 in memory of Pat. And then I don't know if I wrote a note about my Blackbird piece. Again, the, that Blackbird piece that I um, have been working on that has been just a car project or like if I'm at appointments, I like I put it in my purse and I pull it out and use it. So now I got to make another car project. I didn't know what car projects really were, like the importance of them. I know some people call them like the at the bus stop or at parent pickup projects, parent pickup projects. Oh, I like that. The three P, um, you know, you're waiting in line for your kid to get out of school. And so you're waiting in your car. And so you have something to stitch on. So there it is. Uh, yeah. So those are my two finishes to show you there. Oh, I have a third finish. Did I grab the magazine to show you? I did. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Okay. So here, um, this is, uh, cross stitch and country crafts. This is a back issue. Um, there's like the best of cross stitch and country crafts, the book that came out. This is a discontinued magazine. This came out, I want to say in like 1980 as well. Let me see if I can find the exact date. 1988. So the September, October, 1988. Um, and it has the cows on the cover. I had this back issue of the magazine and then I uh, was on eBay because I cannot help myself. Uh, I participated in the collaborative, the cross stitch designers, the moo, the merrier cross stitch stuff um, with the silky thread packs last year. And I did my cow, the portrait of a Highland cow. And, but I had been looking for other cow related cross stitch stuff. I found a lot of like completed cross stitch that all had cow themed stuff. And then I found this one and it was partially completed. So I purchased it. It was an abandoned project or a, what is a UFO project. I purchased it on eBay and decided to finish it. And I did, and I'm so happy that I did. So here is my finish. Again, it was mostly done. Uh, she had stitched most of it. I went back through and did the back stitching. I finished the letter alphabet. So I matched I, my DMCs. So I have some collections of DMC threads that are on bobbins that I've purchased like from estate sales and yard sales and stuff. And the dye lots like can be like just a hair different. So I actually went into my older thread box, the bobbin box, and got like the older colors because this is, I didn't know how long this had been sitting around undone. And I was able to match the, the reds perfectly and finish this project. Oh, hey, sorry about that. The pugs, um, they would not settle. <laughs> I tried so hard, but hopefully you got enough pug sightings for this video and I will just like concentrate on needlework real fast. So I got this little pin and I wanted to show, it's called One Stitch at a Time. And I got it at the Sheep and Wool Festival that they, I went to a couple months ago, Maryland Sheep and Wool Festival. I got that. I don't know if you guys know, guys, gals, stitchers know that I absolutely love pins. And I'm going to start uh, my collection of needlework inspired like enamel pins for my you know, the thing that you wear, name tags. Yes, name tags that you wear to stitchy events, crossing my fingers, I can go to a stitchy event. Um, or like the Nashville Needlework Market where you put your name and then it's like where you're from and who you are. Well, I've got a couple cross stitch style enamel pins. I'm gonna add this one, which is more generic, like stitching, like knitting, but I liked it. And then I got this. Uh, I went to, I went on an adventure, cross state lines for cross stitch. 
and wound up at a huge antique store that I'm going to do a video on. Anyway, at the antique store, I bought one piece of um, textiles and then I got a uh, wooden platypus uh, pin because who doesn't need a wooden platypus pin in their life? <laughs> so I, I might change this into a needle minder, but it was so dang cute. I had to have it. So <laughs> I just wanted to show those before I forgot. I love pins and stickers <laughs> so we have the oh what was i talking about i was talking about this cow that i finished again i'm not sure who started the stitching but i was excited and happy to finish the stitching i know some of you in the past have seen this project and you have told me that you stitched this back in the day which is awesome so i am not sure i think i might finish it um into a project bag. This is stitched on a 14 count Ada cloth. It's super nice. It's all cotton. Um, I don't, I feel like it can be like, I can carry it and do stuff with it. I don't know. I also feel like I could put it onto a quilt. I don't really want to frame it and that's okay. So I, and there's no rush. I'll figure out what I want to do with it, but I can't believe it's done again. Super cool. Very happy. It was utterly awesome to finish it. Okay. I think those are all my finishes. I just dumped uh, DMC everywhere because <sighs> that's what I do. Uh, I talked about the let's talk gifts stitchy kindness oh my gosh so i want to thank all of you for coming on this floss tube cross stitch adventure with me i think it's been three years four years i don't know it's been a while i got a couple um stitchy kindness things in um the meal so um uh, no particular order. I just have a pile here. So I want to uh, first um, thank Megan, wide-eyed stitching child. She is a fellow uh, Maryland stitcher. I fangirled her hard a couple years ago following her channel. Um, she's also here on YouTube and I will link her below. And she stitches beautiful stuff and she's just, she's just a treasure. And she sent me um, this beautiful project bag. And so we, uh, she said, do a Maryland inspired something in here. And I think that's an excellent idea. This is the State Flower of Maryland, Black Eyed Susans. And this bag is so pretty. So, and it's got the yellow. I love yellow. I tell people my favorite color is purple, but I you know I design oh, so much with yellow and I love yellow so much. I'm kind of wondering if yellow is my favorite color. I don't know. So that beautiful bag, thank you. She sent me this really nice card with glitter because who doesn't love glitter? And then she stitched this for me. Oh my gosh, it's so pretty. So she stitched this, the sunflowers for me and they, uh, so she said it's on 40 count and she stitched it um, with one strand on 40 count and it's so pretty. I love it so much. So I'm going to be, I'm working on my sunflower wall. So I have, you know, the Van Gogh sunflower print. I have the sunflowers I stitched from one of the cross country, um, cross stitching country crafts. I finished my sampler from Bright Needle, which has got the sunflowers on it. Uh, Bindi Stitchy, uh, Stitchy Kindness to me last year, the sunflower house pattern that I need to work on. So I love sunflowers. So I've got to put this with my collection, but so far I've been, I put this next to my computer and I've been working and looking at it and it's so nice. Okay. The next bit of stitchy kindness I got was from Sally. Hi, Sally. And thank you. So she sent me a really nice note with some pictures of her garden and she sent me some, well, she sent me this plate. Okay. So I will insert I will insert my plate wall. It's a work in progress. So according to Instagram, you're not a grand millennial homeowner or you're not a, you're not styling in the grand millennial style. Apparently there are rules now, <laughs> unless you have a plate wall, which I've always wanted a plate wall. I started a plate wall 
Uh, and then now officially you have to have a plate wall. I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> she sent me this plate and I love it. So uh, I did a highly technical thing to hang it. Look, yes, I did. Highly technical. So it's one of those decorative plates that had the holes and I used a glitter pipe cleaner because I'm a, I'm a mother of young children and glitter pipe cleaners are, are my life. Yes. Using to uh, hang the plate. Uh, so thank you, Sally. And then uh, because Halloween uh, 365, she sent me some candles and she sent them to me uh, before the hot weather and humidity set in here in Maryland. Y'all, if you're on the East Coast, you know what I mean about humidity. West Coasters. Okay, so I'm from California. I did not know what a heat index was until I moved to the East Coast. I didn't know. But look at these cute little candles. So I'm um, gonna put these with my Halloween decor, not with my stitching because what if something melts? But um, I'm gonna wrap it up and I always, uh, all decorative candles stay indoors in temperature controlled places. I would also recommend, although I am not a stitching um, expert, I, but I would highly recommend you also keep your stitching, your models, your finished stitches, your, your under the bed box, whatever you call it, um, in your main home where it is, uh, relatively temperature controlled. Okay. All right. That's my PSA. Uh, and I say that, um, because you don't want the temperature fluctuations that can cause, um, dampness, mildew, um, anything that could help their contribute to the deterioration of your stitching or um, cause any injury to your stitching. So that's that. Okay, and then Anne, I want to thank Anne. She sent me a nice little care package as well. So yay, thank you, Anne. And this, uh, she sent me a really nice card. Just a note. So super cute. And then, um, some cute little goodies. Um, and I got, she sent me a whimsical little, little, little mouse riding a candy cane. She sent me Bobby G designs mini stitches, a little witch's head. And that's uh, 44 by 36 stitches. So it's a little tiny, cute little thing. Then she sent me Victorian Christmas. So this is on, um, most of these ornaments are like, are on perforated paper. Super cute. Let me see if I can find a better, like close up image for you. Okay, so I love these little mini rolling pins, little ornaments. So uh, I have a sampler, count the pins, and then I got the little mini rolling pins and like painted the ends red and then like made little ornaments with the pin, rolling pins. Anyway, so then when I saw this, I'm like, oh my God, that's so cute. But she sent me some of like the Southwestern design stuff. Um, Cause I have been collecting that stuff, to, um, talking about the indigenous, um, indigenous designers and indigenous designs of uh, North and South America and the importance of recognizing indigenous art and communities, um, American Indian art and First Nations art and uh, to spirit art, all of the art. So uh, that was great. So that's some of the themes of the stuff she sent me. So I'm going to show you that right now. So the South, I think she sent me this one in particular for the Southwestern Christmas. There's like the Pueblo house. Um, the hot, the hot peppers, gecko, the little cowboy boot, the cactus. It's super awesome. So this um, issue, season's greetings on chart on page nine, designed by Ann Hall. This is, okay, what's the publication? The first page here is um, a DMC ad, an old DMC ad. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Sorry, I should have. I should have done this in advance. Super cute stuff. Okay. 
um, I'm seeing 1991 on this calendar thing. So it must be, so yeah, early 90s. So awesome. Cross 60 cross stitch charts from the cross stitcher magazine. Okay. Yeah. Volume seven, issue five. Awesome. So lots of little charts and designs and stuff in there. And then she sent me super cute teddy bear chart. That's so cute. It's so cute. And then the Indian headdress um, designed by Phyllis Barry Wooten. Wooten. And that is a Pegasus publication. And that came out in... 1993. It's 127 by 105. And then she sent, this one's really pretty. This is um, Lone Deer and it's called Golden Five. She's out of Virginia. And that, I mean, that's like full coverage. That's really pretty there. Um, Golden Five, Lone Deer, Sonagalese Designs. I don't see um, a date, but the pattern number looks like L, uh, Lima Delta Dash 9701. Oh, uh, copyright uh, 1996. So I'm not sure if that is still available. Here's the information on the back if you need to do a screenshot. All right, and then a super, a super cute um, freebie from Homespun Elegance of a little bunny rabbit. Homespun Elegance, she's been around for a while. She, like She has a lot of designs that I really like. Um, she's also out of Virginia, Sandra Sullivan. Okay, and then Monarch Horizons County Cross Stitch, The Three Sisters. This is so pretty here. And look, she's working on the loom, the pottery. Oh, that is, it's so pretty. So this is by Horizons Designs, and it is um, pattern number um, C, uh, Charlie Bravo 15. And it's uh, the designer is um, Roger Renardi. I've seen a couple, I have a couple other of his uh, patterns. I have like an autumn landscape I've got some of his stuff but um what I like about this is the weaving and it shows like the the rugs the blanket the weaves it's really pretty I really admit this is really nice so and thank you so much that was so lovely of you I really appreciate it thank you so much um yeah so those are uh stitchy kindness love it and hi sweetie the next bit I have is what I'm working on. So since I just showed you all the American Indian art stuff, I'll show you. I've been working on this Sitka Stitches piece. It's a uh, totem. It's um, by Gail Solara. Um, she, you can find, I know um, you can find her stuff um, on the secondary market on eBay. This is the totem. I did my own color conversion, but it's, it's got four colors and I'm so close to being done with this. Oh my gosh. I'm so excited. So, or am I done with this? Oh my gosh. Hey everyone. I forgot. I finished. <laughs> did I finish? It's finished. Hey, I have another finish. I forgot to tell you about Sitka stitches. I gotta finish this. I gotta fully finish it. So here is my finish. I cannot believe I forgot that I finished this. I'm so sorry. <laughs> so uh, I wanna finish this as a um, three dimensional. I actually wanna make it into a totem. And I so I'm gonna go pretty close around here um, and then sew it. I'm gonna stuff, the, probably on the bottom, I'm gonna put um, something weighted on the bottom to help it stand upright and then like sawdust. And then at the very top, I'll do some polyfill, like the polyester stuffing so that it can stand upright on its own. Um, 
Vanna the Twisted Stitcher has some amazing tutorials on how to finish and do like this, these types of um, stand up finishes. So I would recommend going to her channel. Um, she has a beautiful array of resources, uh, very informative. Yeah, I gotta finish. I gotta make sure I put that in my finish um, count for the year. All right, my next work in progress, I'm gonna have to insert a photo of it. It is um, out of one of the current cross stitch or magazines. Uh, and I print, I, um, I had access to the digital magazine through my library system, um, through the platform called Libby, L-I-B-B-Y. So um, many cross-stitch publications license their magazines to libraries that then pay a licensing access fee in order for their library card holders to access and read magazines. So Libby is an app that I have on my device. So go ahead and check for, with your own local library system and what their licensing is and what magazines they carry. Mine here in Maryland carries the Cross Stitcher magazine, uh, Just Cross Stitch, which I am published in this month for um, another one of my sailboat designs that is also accessed available on the computer through Libby. Um, there's also, so Cross Stitcher, there's the Russian, I think for the Lovo cross stitch, the Russian one, the UK cross stitcher, just cross stitch. Then there's a couple other like home, um, homespun, which is an Australian publication. And they've, they've featured a couple of cross stitch designers recently. I was, I told you I was doing the fluffle of bunnies, um, piece. They also had a Gail Busey piece recently. So, you know, check out, there's a lot of different crafts and cool resources stuff. So this, this, one is called the Lino Cut Landscape, and I gotta show you what it looks like. Um, I my needle minder is from um, Bo Ever Art, she, amazing, and it's the Beach Needle Minder. It's fused glass. She uh, I met her at Nashville Needlework Market. Amazing, beautiful fused glass artist. I know that several cross stitch shops are carrying these needle minders holy moly she makes like in like her needle minders are next level so look at that magnet okay but there's not just one there's two so i can hold my this holds my scissors like not just needles but like full-on scissors so that's my needle minder i know show you show the chart already amanda may okay Did I print out the full pattern to show you? Lino Landscaped. Stitch. It's by. Stitched by Lisa Draycott. So she was the model stitcher. Oh, some of the. And it's got a rabbit. I, I'll show. I'll have to insert it. So um, Lino Cut Landscape. So it's all in blue. I decided to pull out one of my. yard sale thrift store old charles craft 28 count linen tubes i think i've told you all about the gloriousness of these tubes before when i go and i'm like does it have something in it or not i got i got i got several here like this is a pink never been a 14 count pink charles craft Charles Craft, uh, the last couple of years, they got bought out by DMC. So now DMC is uh, producing and selling the uh, under the Charles Craft. So DMC now has that. Okay. Anyway, but you know, you never know. So I bought this not knowing that it was fully finished, a fully, you know, a stitch thing. So you just never know. So I got to figure out how I'm going to finish that. So yeah. Anyway, in my tube, what's in my tube is the lino cut piece that I started. So I am stitching this with um, two strands. No, I'm lying. One strand, 
because I forgot I'm using Sulky. I thought I was using DMC for a minute. Okay, I'm using one strand of 1076 uh, Sulky on a 28 count pure Irish linen. I am stitching all the back stitching with the one strand as well. So I'm not uh, doing anything differently. So it started up the sky and then it's gonna come down. I'm working, there's the outline start of the tree and then it's gonna come down and then there's gonna be the bunny down here. I'll make sure I show you. So this has been fun. There's a lot of space here, like here where there's a lot of long stitches and I'm not gonna put any of those field long stitches or the deer or any of those like half stitches where there's huge gaps between stitches until I finish like finish all of it, iron it, put the interfacing behind it, and then I can carry my stitches and do that those stitches without you seeing my long carries because there'll be the interfacing that'll block it. So I'm so the field here, that's why none of the field stuff's filled in. I'll do that at the end. But here is the start of the rolled hay field and it's gonna go down. So yeah, this has been, it's been a fun little stitch. And then I have been working on my black bird design chart. I, this has been a work in progress for me for a while, a while. I'm embarrassed to say how long, but I think I've told you all before that I am a process stitcher and not necessarily a, like, I enjoy the process of stitching. I'm not worried about how long it's taking me to stitch. So this is on all the called for, with all the called for colors on the called for fabric, except I'm doing it on a 37 count. So this is Strawberry Fields Forever. And I... Frankly, though, um, got so sick up. So this moss, it's like mostly brown and not green. And it, it the color matched exactly to another green that's called for in the chart. So I ended up substituting the color and using moss for both. So then that's the only green I had and it's getting where it's just all brown and I don't like it. So I ended up grabbing this piece. Um, I've added a green to my palette halfway through the stitch and I added boxwood from the Prim Club, um, the June 2021 Prim Club from Color and Cotton. I added boxwood to my green palette. It is a shade brighter. I'm okay with that. I can't, I can't stitch any more of this brown and say it's green. I just, I can't do it. I know it sounded like a grumpy pants, but like a grumpy bear, but I can't, I just I can't do it anymore. So here we go. Here is my work in progress here. I'm cheated though. Okay. Let me tell you. Okay. So I'm stitching this um, with one strand of the over dyed cotton, all the called for cottons, plus the, the other one I just told you I added. I stitch in hand, so that's why everything's all wrinkled. And it's so small because it's 37 count and the one strand. So I had been working here and I went all the way down and I had done the gate. I had done the fence here and I started on the gate last year and then I made a mistake on the gate and I got upset and I so I put it away it went on the back of my stitching pile for a while and then I decided I'm gonna fix the gate I'm gonna start on the house all is right with the world so I started adding the berries and I got down to the house I did the roof of the house of course I messed up on the chimney but that's okay I came down I did some of the windows and then I went and fixed the gate and started on the gate and then I realized that I'm off up here like by two stitches somewhere and I'm afraid that if I carry on my I might start stitching my my brick fence no this is a fence this is a wall my brick wall words can be hard 
my brick wall, I was afraid that it was going to be off. So I decided, I took it upon myself to just stitch one strand of that green, that color and cotton boxwood across. And I did this last night. And what I did is I went across here and then I went, I stitched just one leg of my cross, you know, where I stitched nine and then the 10th one, I crossed my X and then stitch nine, the 10th one crossed my X. So then I stitched, I think it's like 56 across. So I know from here to here now, this is the bottom of the, of the chart. I added the grass. I'm okay with that. I might even go ahead when all is said and done, see how there's no, there's no grass on the bottom here. I might go ahead and add a couple more. I might add some more grass. I might put a lawn in, right? I could put a lawn in if I wanted to. So, <laughs> and so now I feel better about adding up here the, um, the rock wall, rock wall. Yes. So this is going to be a tiny little finish uh, when it is done, but it's taken so long. One thing about Blackbird designs is that you look at it sometimes, like I look at it and go, oh, that's you. They're obviously using an over dyed green because you can see like the variation in green. No, they like chart like, OK, you stitch half of this motif in this color and then the next color you change greens oh and then then on the back stitch back or the 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 like this section is one green this is another green this is another green so say if you weren't stitching with overdyes and you're stitching with a dmc they would create that color variation so it's very interesting and i like it and i learn a lot from stitching other people's work and it's exciting and I love it and I love strawberries and I love all the things yay so yeah that is um those are my works in progress I have oh my god I'm still so much to show you okay let's talk we'll go through a couple of things in the goodie bag the goodie bin here and then we'll just have to come back next episode and we'll show and I'll show more all right so what's first here okay I also design punch needle patterns. Did you know that? I do. I'm going to start selling more punch needle on my website. So stay tuned. But until then, I want to show you. <laughs> I found this at a yard sale. Um, we stopped. My kids found some toys. And I was like, oh my goodness. Oh my God. Look at that. Punch needle. So I got this super cute set. It came um, with a punch I have not tried. Um, it's a different punch and a different hoop and a different everything. Um, I wanna try the DMC fabric. I've never used their weaver's cloth, which is different than the weaver's cloth offered like by Ultra Punch. So, hey, I've got some stuff to try out. And then here, these are patterns and it's it's got the embroidery transfer on it, which is pretty cool. So it's exciting to see how different companies um, do things and um, see if I can do better and be better with my stuff. Plus, I have a project that I can work on, you know, when you just agitated and your kids, I've asked you the same question 487 times and you just want to sit and start something and then make something beautiful like a snowman. I love my children. I love my children. Okay, what else do we have? Okay, Stony Creek. This is cool. So I got this at the thrift store. It's a wake up prayer. It's got a little kitty cat. Full disclosure though, I didn't buy it because I loved the pattern. Mm -mm. I bought it because it came with fabric. Look at that. So I was super stoked. It came with all the fabric and it's like a full kit. So I could work on it if I wanted to. So this is Stody Creek collection, wake up prayer. And it's got the little kitty cat on this front porch stoop with the flowers and the cute. So, I mean, I could literally just stitch this and not do any of this other stuff. You know, you don't have to add the writing. You could just do that cute little kitty cat. So we got that. Oh, this is so precious. Okay. So this is a day at the beach. This is another Stony Creek design. 
super cute stony creek collection leaflet 21 life at the beach so i liked the lighthouse i love lighthouses so i like the lighthouse and then the cute the kids the kids are cute too i don't really want to stitch the kids though i got i like the lighthouse a day at the beach this came out they recommend a zweigart linen it's one of those big charts wow okay and i don't see a, oh 1988 cool 1988 that came out the next thing is a stitch world x stitch 1998 and i like this because it's got the quilts on the fence and the house and isn't that so nice quilts for sale um design size is nine by five by 13 by five i'm seeing if there is a pattern number okay so the chart is in color and um original art by diane Fallian. fillion p-h-a-l-e-n so isn't, I really like that. Super nice. Oh, even the sky, I mean, that's full coverage. Even the sky is cross-stitched. What do we want to show next? Okay, this stitch works. Tulsa, Oklahoma, trains and checkers. Uh, game boards, I know several of you um, stitching the Monopoly game board have stitched other like chess boards, game boards and stuff. I love the idea of stitching a game board. So I have a collection of like game board patterns. I have the Monopoly game board pattern. Back when I first started cross stitching ever, that was one of the first charts I ever found, not knowing that it's a unicorn chart for many people, but I in started collecting game board charts. I know, and I've never started or stitched one. But what do they say? Stitching and collecting are two separate hobbies, right? Okay, so <laughs> there's that. And then let's show, I'll show one more and then we'll be done for today. And then you'll just have to come back next time. Uh, I've got it like, we're going to do like a tribute, like a whole Paula Vaughn section. I have like Paula Vaughn stuff to talk about. But here, uh, Jacqueline Enthoven Stitchery for Children. I just, look at that little. So it's summertime here. Um, doing a bunch of stuff with the kids and trying to keep them busy we did um i've collected all my broken plates and stuff over the last several years that you know stuff breaks i drop things so i i've collected all the broken stuff and then we smashed it all up and made um mosaic stepping stones for the garden so we did that project then we made um wind chimes with cans that I've collected like all the different size cans and then we spray painted them and made wind chimes and now I think I'm going to do something fun like this is an older book with like here's like stitching the elephant or dragonfly get them doing some maybe some like long crowl stitching versus cross stitch I don't know but this is an older book it's um literally falling apart and that's okay so this one is um, an older library book that I got at the thrift store. Let me see the year it came out. Um, let me see, cross stitch for children, the front piece, manual for teachers, parents, and children. 1968, this came out. 1968, oh, here's some colored, that mid-century stuff love it i know a lot of people collect the crowl embroidery the mid-century crowl embroidery stuff so anyway there we go so happy you uh spent some time with me this week uh, me and the pugs uh, i'm so grateful for all of you i hope that you have a beautiful week i'm not sure when i'll be back uh recording and filming um it's summertime. I'm hoping that you are having the best summer or season that is available to you wherever you live here on this little blue planet. Please know that I appreciate you. I love you. And I hope that you have a beautiful time stitching because your stitching matters. Take care. Mwah. Much love.